Good Advent so far, not just halfway done. I'd like to invite you to think about your reputation tonight. What's your reputation? Are you a stud? Are you a beauty queen? Are you a smarty pants? I don't know. What's your reputation? The people in the gospel with John the Baptist were less concerned about their reputation with others than with God. I say that because they went into the desert and they're publicly proclaiming their sins as they're being baptized. Think about that. That's a real choice. You can go to confession... (laughs) It's in that little confessional behind the screen. Say your sins. Hardly anyone knows. But John the Baptist is out there in the desert, and he's calling people to repentance for their sins, and they're coming forward in front of everybody. Here's my sins. I need to be baptized so I can be forgiven. It was a form of public penance. In the early church, from 300 on, first centuries, there was actually an order of penitence. It sort of predates modern confession. And the order of penitence was kind of like this. Well, we baptize a lot of people, and now they're starting to sin after they baptize. (laughs) What do we do with them? Especially if they apostatize to the Roman emperor, Or if they committed murder or adultery, what do we do with them? And so the early church had to start deciding. And the bishops would say, well, okay, you stole your sister's bubble gum. Uh, You know, you have to pray two Hail Marys. (laughs) And you, well, you told a bad lie at school. Um, You should do service for an hour somewhere. (laughs) And you apostatize, you're going to be a penitent for quite a while. In fact, some of them were penitents for three years. And what they would do is they would come to church. Now, a lot of churches, Catholic churches, are shaped like a cross, right? Long nave, two transepts to the east and west, and then a sanctuary. Well, a lot of times the catechumens of the church would be in one transept, and the penitents would be in the other transit. So everybody knew who was a penitent, even if they didn't necessarily know exactly what your sin was. And you were reconciled on Holy Thursday. You would come forward, and the bishop would absolve you of the sins and recommunicate you so you go back to receiving communion again. That was the order of penitence. What about our reputation? Are we able to be vulnerable in front of people? Do we admit our sinfulness? You know, when people are vulnerable and admit their weakness, they're more attractive, aren't they? I mean, the person who's so proud and has it all together, it's harder to love. But when someone's vulnerable, children are vulnerable. We're attracted. Our hearts go towards our humility to embrace them to raise them up. I was listening to a story the other day of a man, T.J. Brahma. Sometimes family members come here to Mass. But anyway, he was uh, walking out from his place of dwelling, and he saw a young man breaking into his car. young man was like 15, 16 years old, broke the window. He could have just called the cops, avoided the situation altogether, Whatever reason, courage mustered up in him. And he walked over to the young man in the midst of looking to steal something from his car. And he said, what are you doing? And the young man said, well, I need to find money to feed my family. (laughs) And probably just an excuse. But he thought in his head, TJ, he said, you know what, if I just turn him over to the police and act like I'm the righteous rich person, he'll probably consider it his 
free pass to do this to someone else in the future. Like those people over there don't really have hearts. They're not like us. So he had a little talk with the young man, and he ended up giving him a $20 bill and a hug <laughs> and sent him on his way. I have to laugh at the hug. But anyway, I think there's something beautiful about it in his courage and in his mercy. When we become vulnerable before God, when we become vulnerable with true Christians, unconditional love envelops us. Unconditional love which heals our sin and our wounds. John the Baptist was in the desert, and there's a little bit of a trick in the Hebrew and the Greek. You could read it one of two ways. John the Baptist, in the desert, said, prepare the way of the Lord. Or you could read it this way. John the Baptist said, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. You see the difference? One could be John's in the desert, saying, prepare the way of the Lord. The other is, he's saying we all should go in the desert to prepare the way of the Lord. And part of being in the desert is confrontation with our sins, asking ourselves, is my reputation more important than confessing? <laughs> is my reputation that important with other people that I'm afraid to be weak? Many Christians throughout the centuries would gladly share their weakness because that would help others to become strong. So today, I'm going to invite you to think about yourself in the desert preparing the way of the Lord. And part of that means coming honestly before the Lord and saying, you know what, I'm a sinner just like everyone else. My reputation doesn't matter as much as your unconditional love. 